Hi Yuko, my name's Alex and we're going to be doing your portfolio critique. A little bit on how this is going to work. We're going to start with a overall comment on your work, your direction, your artist statement, and then we're going to go piece by piece in exploring your work and kind of offer, you know, standard critique. We're going to talk about what you could improve on, what you're doing well, and then thank you so much for including two book dummies, which is amazing. So we're going to conclude this portfolio by examining those book dummies and kind of wrapping it up. So we're starting with this image as the piece to look at the overview of your work because I think it shows a lot of your good qualities. You say in your artist statement you're drawn to youthful sensibilities, shape, color, narratives, both whimsical and the tiny moments, and you really want to create content for children. And Check the boxes on all accounts. This is great. Your shape and your color consistently is very strong throughout your work. Those are your strongest pieces, I would say. You say that you want to improve your craft so your art feels concrete and deliverable. We'll explore this in more detail throughout, but I really think you're there. I think, in a way, you, you're asking the wrong question about your work. Now, your work right now, this portfolio, it sounds frustrating, but it reads as a student portfolio. Now let me say it reads as a phenomenal student portfolio, but it reads as a student portfolio. The work that's displayed is a lot of one-off images, with the exception of your children's books, and what art directors and agents like to see in work is consistency. They want to see the same character repeated multiple times in different situations with different lighting, different expressions, and right now, what I mean by the student portfolio, it looks almost assignment-driven. Now, again, your work is incredibly strong, and it's a really good student portfolio, but that's that thing where it just needs some time for you to create more work, more series. To say the frustrating crit phrase, I love it, we just need to see more. Now, there's uh, <laughs> no worries about taking your time on that. Uh, let's explore this piece first. One thing this has instantly that I like is black and white. Now that's something your work does need more of. Uh, and art directors and agents, whether you like talk to them or read blogs, they will always say they want to see black and white. They want to see more of it, especially for illustrators that are just starting out. Because black and white is cheaper to print, it's easier to produce, it's faster to produce most of the time, and you have such a good quality for it. You're, look at the balances of your grays and your lights and your darks, when to let the page shine through. You're really good at black and white, and you need to show that off more. Now, with this one, the color incorporated in, I think it gets a little too wild. There's, I don't know, a kind of mixture in the colors within where the colors work, and it's pretty complex, but they kind of start to blur together. What I think it needs is a change in value within the colors, kind of a change in saturation almost. Let's bring those out. They kind of fall flat, and there's a cool texture and effect of them kind of falling both within and behind the buildings. But let's see them start to come forward as well, and getting some nice opacity in the colors to kind of add to that flow I think would do the trick. This piece is really nice. I love it because it's simple. The colors are simple, the composition is simple, the character is simple, but you're just knocking it out of the park on all accounts. And your work gets pretty complex with its color, which is really impressive, but this one is just like, it's a simple piece that's done extraordinarily well. This brings up another point with your work in general that we're going to be talking about, which you say that you want to create content for children, but don't limit yourself. I think a lot of your sensibility has a lot of strength for editorial work, for advertisements, for magazine publication just as well as children's book color publication. Not to mention children's magazines, like Highlights Magazine, uh, Cricket Magazine, but I gotta say Highlights especially. I mean, send out mailers to them right away, because I think your work would really fit. But with this one, when you create your portfolio and when you present yourself on a website, you almost want to have a full portfolio for every section of work that you create. Now, what I mean by that is when an art director or an agent is looking at your work, 
whether they've received a mailer or they found your website or they met you in person or they're just browsing the internet for new illustrators. They want to they are looking for someone to fill a specific job. And when they find you, they want to see that you are organized as well as versatile. Now you are versatile, but if you show just all of this work in just one section, then they start to wonder whether or not your content is as organized as they want it to be. So if you organize your website as, you know, color, black and white, organize the children's work as different age groups, organize between editorial and children's narrative, showing that organization, your work is going to be key. This piece, I think it needs uh, some work. I would, at the moment, I would remove it from your portfolio, where the things it's doing well, the colors are good. I really like how the one character pressed against the door you identify that character as the main character. So if you wanted to keep this piece in, because there are some strengths to it. I like the whimsy of it. I like the kind of fun characters here. I love the way they kind of fit into the glass. I think it's hysterical. So I would either continue and show more with these characters. But for this piece itself, the thing that bothers me is the unsuitable hybrid between traditional and digital. Now, I love the texture with like the shadow and the exhaust coming out of just the brush stroke. I think that's really powerful. However, it looks like a, you just kind of magic erasered the background to be white and that left this very awkward kind of trim around that brush stroke. So I would definitely take the time to clean that up a little bit because it looks like this piece is just kind of cropped out of something larger. This is, to me, this is one of my favorite pieces of yours. I think it's fantastic. I love it because it, it shows everything you're good at. It shows the strong color. We have a central main character we instantly identify with. Look at that green, that's fantastic. And the fact that it's the only aspect of it in the piece, boom, easily identifiable. This would be such a good piece to make a series of because you could just follow this girl in the green coat and this exploration and it's it's hysterical. It's wonderful. And it also hits both the editorial and the children's market. I mean, this piece does all the things that you're really good at. To edit it up a little bit, I would make room for text. Now, for me, just because I want to go into children's illustration too, I see this as a double page spread in a children's book. And if that's the case, then I think there needs to be more room for the text. The areas that instantly strike out to me are to the left of the girl in that space above her. If that was a little bigger, throw in some lorem ipsum text there to play around with. Or what could be fun is putting it in the body of the largest businessman. This piece, it doesn't really fit in with the rest of your work. And this does kind of speak to what I said earlier of, it's cool to have different styles. In fact, it's great to be versatile, but you wanna show that you know you are. So right now, this piece presented with the rest of your work, it doesn't really fit in, and it kind of comes off as definitely a one-off. So you wanna show more like this. However, this is one where I don't mean making a series based off this image. You know, like, I don't really want to see more images of the characters in Pizza Park. I want to see more images similar to this. But I think my biggest problem with this one is that its layout and its setup is very editorial in its language, but it's uh, it doesn't seem to fit for an editorial market either because it's about a pizza theme park. So... Yeah, this is one that I, I think I would remove from the piece, because any of the good things about it, you're showing stronger in other pieces. This is another terrific piece of yours. There's a couple things I would change, but overall, this one's spot on. I really like the boldness of the color. Purple's really hard to use and use well. I love the textures. The textures included are remarkable. Just the leaves of the top of the carrot are really nice. And I love just the chef character who's just kind of licking off the salt. Like, that's such a weird little secret in there. The things that I would improve are the background to me is really meh. Like, it really doesn't do a lot for me. 
and I'm, I don't really like the lime green of the plate. I think it's one of those things where the color theory is there, but the color in practice doesn't quite work out, where the red shadow, the green plate, like the red pants, those are all playing well together, and they should play well together. But I think when you incorporate them in this larger piece, then it becomes unnecessarily distracting. Like, look at what you want the focal point to be. You want the focal point to be the main chef seasoning that carrot and the other chefs. And if you kind of look at this and just follow the purple, you're doing it. But the green to me kind of jars me out of it. I would mute that green just a little bit. This is one of my favorite pieces of yours. I think this is really nice. Um, it does come off a lot more as an editorial piece, which, again, I, I hope I don't sound like a broken record, but I really think you do need to divide between your children's work and your editorial pieces. You need to show the right people the right things. Because your work is, it's really professional, it's really nice, I just think you need to be more clear about what kind of work it's suited for. The character of the little hunter is, ah, oh, he's charming. I love his little mustache. I love the how you can use shape so well to make characters. Something that I struggle with definitely is like, and I think a lot of illustrators do too, is you have this idea of like your characters have to be based on reality. But you, you just throw that out the window and you make your characters based off your reality. And that's a really cool thing that you're making work. This one, again, you need more black and white pieces like this. But I really, really love this one because of all of the different representations of characters. They all appear to be, <clears throat> they all appear to be in the same universe, which is really tricky. Like, when you look at how weird and different they all are, like, look at that character who has, like, the weird... His eyes kind of look like blobby eggs. Like, it's hysterical, but he doesn't seem out of place. You know, and you're showing different ages, different genders, different races, and this is something really strong that I think you could really do a lot more of in your work. Now, that's a tricky realm. Um, there was a talk that I heard about diversity in illustration. And the key is, uh, bottom line, to tell your story. Because you don't want it to have, like, oh, this is the, like, quote-unquote, token character that we're including just to be PC. And this piece doesn't do that. This piece is very naturally just a fun, wonderful piece that also happens to show diversity. So really well done with that. Now let's get into your children's book dummies. All, first, awesome work with these. You've really done a lot with them. You've really put in a lot of work and effort to them. Talking a little bit about how dummies and submissions with publications work. Let's just kind of start with that as an overview. So when you submit a dummy to an art director, one, nine times out of ten, they don't want to see an unsolicited dummy. Two, they don't want to see a completed book as the dummy. The reason is because then it comes off that you as an illustrator aren't willing to work with them. That it, you come off more as, this is my piece, it's all done, let's take it to press. And it reads that you wouldn't be flexible with edits. So the typical setup of a dummy will be two to three completely finished and polished illustrations. And then the rest of the book would be really light sketches, loose perhaps some color studies, perhaps some black and white studies, but overall they should definitely read as incomplete. Now, for Andy Bought a Cup, something that immediately strikes me is that the text of the alphabet and the text of the book itself, they don't seem to fit. They seem a little basic and a little standard, and I appreciate that they hearken to kind of like the classroom setting, but they don't really fit with the kind of fun style. Now, when you look at children's narrative for books, sometimes you want books to not reference the classroom setting. For a lot of kids, unfortunately, the classroom's not a fun place to learn, but books are. Kind of, you kind of have to trick kids into learning sometimes. Today, Andy bought a cup. This is nice. The composition is, it's pretty simple, but 
it, it works for the start page of the book. Um, I, I want to say I don't really like the character design of Andy. Uh, I think he's just pretty simple. I like how he kind of echoes the cup in his shape, but that's about it. Uh, one thing you're doing in this page, and you're doing it consistently throughout, I like how you lead the eye to want to turn the page. And that's a really tricky thing to do composition with a book, but you're doing it pretty well. And from the cup flew a dog. Love the color on the dog. Really like the setup of this, how, again, you turn the page, the dog springs out of the cup. With the dog hopped an elephant, a fish, and a goat. The text here is very scattered. I enjoy how the animals are scattered, but the text looks like it was just kind of slapped on there. And with a book, as I referenced in the earlier piece with the three businessmen, the text has to be just as much of a part of a design as the images. Now there's one book that I always have to bring up, which is Journey. It's a phenomenal illustrated book. It's a Caldecott winner, and I would snarkily say it's the comment to B.J. Novak's A Book Without Pictures, which made illustrators across the world shake their fist in frustration, because Journey is a children's book without words, and it tells the whole thing purely visually. Now that's impressive, just as, it hurts me to say, B.J. Novak's book, A Book Without Pictures, is also impressive. But nine times out of ten, the books have to work together. They have to use both of them in a unified way. And with this one especially being an alphabet book, again, the text itself, the font needs to be more exciting, and the layout needs to be better. Also, I love that goat. That goat is one of my favorite characters. The goat hiccuped some ice cream. That's wacky, that's zany. But at this point, as a reader, and especially if I'm imagining, like, as a child reading this book, okay, we're, we got to the letter I, and sure, some more wacky things are happening, but the layout of the book hasn't changed. And from the ice cream jumped a kangaroo. What's going on, Andy thought. See, again, there's the composition throughout has not really changed, and I'd like to see some more variation through that. Oh dear, I forgot to read the label. I, I think this is funny. The composition's very square and central and a little simple, but to me that kind of reads as a little slapstick and a little dry, and I enjoy that. It didn't stop there. From the kangaroo's pouch sprang a monkey. Love that monkey character. He's fantastic. Or she. They're fantastic. Now, b before we move on though, the kangaroo here, right smack in the center, right where the fold of the book would be. So I would move him and keep that in mind as you're designing these pages as well. From the monkey's nose squirmed an octopus. Now, I love the octopus, but this is one of those things where the character could be pushed further, and that would allow the composition to be pushed further as well. What if those tentacles were wrapping all around, you know? What if they were entangling, coming forwards and backwards in space? Now, picture that, and then I want you to picture the past book. And what if all of these animals were adding into the composition? and just kind of lumping together and making a really exciting collage. Kind of the reverse of a wonderful, wonderful children's book by art director and author uh, Lucy Ruth Cummings. And it's all about a lion eating a bunch of animals. And the book starts with a lion and a lot of animals spread out. And then as you turn the page, they keep disappearing. And it's funny and it's simple and it works. And I think you could pull off the reverse of this, where the pages and the compositions would get more cluttered and more complex. Cute penguin, too. And from behind the penguin came a quacking duck. 
and was Andy was really shocked. Oh my word. See, yeah, this, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, but it's not really coming across strongly. It doesn't look busy. It doesn't look chaotic. But then Andy's friend Tammy stopped by. Uh-oh, is Andy okay? I enjoy the design of Tammy, but he, if I'm honest, instantly reads as Squidward, uh, and I think that that's a problem. Squidward, of course, from the universally acclaimed Spongebob Squarepants show. So having a little bit of the uniqueness that you have in the rest of your work, I think should show off with Tammy. Tammy vacuumed the mess. See, this is another one. Push that envelope. Make that vacuum huge and bulging and show the shapes of the animals inside of it. It just, it's nice, but it's a little simple. Wow. Thank you, Tammy. Remember to always x-ray your cups, Tammy yelled back. Andy will not go shopping tomorrow. What a zany day. To me, narrative-wise as well, these last couple letters, I do appreciate how you managed to work out the entire alphabet within this story, but the trick with any alphabet story is, from page one, I wonder how they're going to handle X and Y. <clears throat> and... I think that x-ray and xylophone, like, things like that, it, it is kind of thrown in there. Georgie. Visually, I love this book. Narratively, if I'm honest, it's very confusing, and I'm not really sure what's going on. Now, the thing about that, the book also comes off to me as very personal for you as an artist. And if you allow me to talk for just a little bit here about with children's publication and with narrative work, it's tricky because this is where the divide between fine art and publishing illustration kind of is drawn. So when you create work that's personal, as an artist, be as personal as you want, be as private as you want, and really tell the story you want to tell. As an illustrator, it has to translate well. The reason I say all this is because this book, Georgie, reminds me of my first attempt at a children's book where I was using true life events to kind of inspire a fictional metaphor story for kids. And the problem when I gave it to test readers was that it didn't make any sense at all because it was an only a story that I knew. So back to Georgie itself, I love this as a book cover. Again, visually, Georgie's wonderful. And again, hear this as that inside, um, oh, I cannot remember the technical term, but those inside pages, really, really nice. Love the simplicity here. I wish the character of Georgie was just right underneath the title there. Once, eh, this is, that's a unnecessary page. One Sunday at mid-afternoon, man, look at these fun characters, the environments here. I love the tandem bikes, the dogs. This is such a good page. I just wish it would spread further. I wish this was a double-page spread of the whole city. There's a great book by John Rocco you should check out called Blackout. That's another Caldecott-winning book, and it's wonderful. And this kind of I think you'd draw a lot of inspiration from that book. He appeared. This will do, he thought. See, right now, I love the kind of randomness of it. I'm not sure what he's doing there, but my problem is, is that throughout the book, that question is not answered. This, by the way, this is a terrific example of a book dummy. You know, this is definitely clearly, I should say I hope it's clearly, the sketch rough example, whereas this is what it would look like final. Across the city, she saw him, tightly wedged and not leaving any time soon. So, this one I have problems with. One, because I wish the illustration spread across the two pages. Two, because it took me a really long time to find Georgie. And... 
I like secrets and illustration, and I like having to search for things, but this was, it, you gotta put it a little bit further. Now it's a fine line to walk, because you don't want something to be obvious, but you don't want it to be like this, where it's too hard to find. She went to visit him. Cake? she asked. This cake was spongy and lovely, like a pillow the color of sunlight. When he took a modest bite, the girl beamed. I hope we can become very good friends. I don't know why cake is in quotations. And I don't think it should be. Every day after, the girl would go to the same block with the cake-loving creature. They would talk about pudgy pigeons, buildings, and the sky. See, here again, the question that we have here, and what makes this page so wonderful, is like, who is this guy? What's he doing? He's just sitting there, and the girl brings him cake. And I'm drawn to the visuals, but at this point, I'm already lost from the story. Soon, Moore began to notice the newcomer. Wowee, we should call him something. How about Georgie? It's perfect for him. We should all play together. That's kind of cute. I love all the kids popping their heads out of the window. I love the girl sticking her head out that's upside down, the ponytail hanging down. That's wonderful. I also, man, I cannot say it enough, I love this book visually. I love the cute little way that Georgie is just stuck in between those buildings. That's, again, like, the story needs to match that. I'm not sure, like, this is your story, so you can take it how you will. But right now Georgie just appears. He doesn't say he wants cake, he just gets cake. And then once he gets the cake and is happy, nothing changes. So a Georgie he became. He was the best Georgie the children ever met. Some thought he looked like a dumb and even a melody. I think Sir Squish Squash works well too, said one child. That's kind of cute. I love the children entering into him kind of like Jello. That's pretty cute. This is one image that I think should be brought to the finish if, for this book dummy, you're presenting two to three completed illustrations. Because I'm very curious, one, about the color of Georgie, and two, what it looks like when the children enter into him. This page, I... It's nice visually, but there are other pages that are better visually, and it also doesn't really seem to serve a purpose in the story. Georgie's not here. Um, I'm gathering that the line of people could be going to see Georgie, but that's not entirely clear. All the while, she wondered if he still had a chance to talk about the sky. Okay, so Georgie's getting more popular... He's hanging out with other kids. Um, there's the cake in the window. But one day, it was time for Georgie, Dom, Melody, Sir Squishy Squash to leave. See this? I'm, I'm definitely confused what's going on here. Why did he leave? What was the reason the girl didn't hang out with him with the other kids? There's the beginning seeds of what could be a good story here, but I think it definitely needs to be fleshed out more. Soon he reached a new place. This will do, he thought, but one day, not too long after, love this illustration. There was a bit of sunlight, and it was just as spongy and lovely as the first time. See, narrative-wise, this definitely translates as that false de defeat, that low point, and then the resolution. My problem with the narrative is that none of that makes sense to me. But a lovely closing page. <laughs> now, again, just in summary of your work, I really think it's strong. I just think you need to create more of it. Focus on more series. Focus on exploring more characters. Focus on dividing your work between editorial and children's. Create more black and white images as well. Keep doing what you're good at. Keep using your strengths. Your strengths are wonderful color, great shape. Your characters are more, more often than not really, really strong. And the areas where the characters could improve, you are your own best teacher. Just continue what you're doing. You say you love sketching, drawing dreams, drawing to music. Keep letting that be your inspiration. 
because it's clearly leading you to a good point. Now, I want to close when initially when I said that the portfolio is very strong, but it does read as a student portfolio. What essentially I, the next step then is to create a whole new portfolio, to start from scratch and build up new images, new series, focusing on new characters, using what you know and building it stronger. But for words of inspiration, because I remember when I was given the same advice, except by the way, my college portfolio was so much worse than yours. <laughs> um, but it reminds me of a funny moment in a cooking show I recently saw where a character was eliminated from the competition and she said, I'm never going to stop baking. I might not bake tomorrow or the day after, but I'm never going to stop baking. So in that sense, there is no pressure in the time. To make it an illustration career, the number one thing more than any other skill is patience. Take the time, don't rush it, and know that you have something good here. You have really great foundation, and set yourself little benchmarks. Six months from now, I would love to see a, like two sets of series. The series should be three images long, and I think just kind of explore more, build that more, and keep stockpiling for an already stellar portfolio.